Psalms 33, verse 6. Psalms 33, verse 6 says, By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. And of course, we understand and know that it is by the, the, the spirit of life that came forth when God spoke and the whole world and universe came into being. And that is by the power of the Holy Spirit. Effective prayers are based directly, first, by, based directly on the promise of Scripture. So if you're praying for something, you're believing God for something, and you pray, then uh, it should base, be based directly on the promise of God's Word. Secondly, and it is coupled by the inspiration of the Spirit. See, because uh, you can just quote any scripture that fits whatever your situation, your need, and then you can pray. But then many times we find that it doesn't seem to work. You don't have much result. So uh, it must be based on the scripture, on the promise of God's word. And it's so it has to be coupled with, uh, by the inspiration of the Spirit. As I go on, you would understand what I mean. We need to, first of all, hear the Word of God. We have to hear, be able to listen and hear the Word of God. When our prayer is inspired by the Word, then it has effectual power. It has spiritual authority. Took a look at Daniel. Daniel took God's Word seriously. He, he, he is one who reads the Word of God. You say, hey, Pastor, where got Bible during those days? They don't have the Bible. They don't have the New Testament and all those other books. But they do have the writings of the prophet. So he was reading the, the writings of Jer the prophet Jeremiah. So he was reading God's Word, and he took it seriously when he read it. And in Daniel chapter 9, verse 2, it says, Daniel understood by the books the number of the years specified by the word of the Lord through Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. In other words, the word of God has been spoken by the prophet Jeremiah, and it was recorded. All the prophets, their prophecies are recorded and, 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 and like uh, chronicles, and it's put uh, in, in the places of worship. And so Daniel have, was reading Prophet Jeremiah's writing, and he, he, the Bible says that he understood the books. He understood the number of years, the 70 years that God has said that Jerusalem will be in desolation. The Israelites will be in captivity. And after the 70 years, then he would bring about a, a, a return and bring the return of the Jewish people to the promised land again. And so Daniel, when he understood by the word, he prayed. When Daniel understood, in that, uh, Daniel chapter 9, verse 3, it says, Then I set my face toward the Lord God to make requests by prayer and supplications, with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed to the Lord my God. When you read the word of God, if it means something to you, if it inspires you and challenges your faith, what should you do? You should be praying. God sent his angel to encourage Daniel and to give him further understanding of the word. In Daniel chapter 9, verses 21 to 22, uh, it says, Yes, while I was sp speaking in prayer, the man, Gabriel, the man Gabriel, whom I have seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, reached me about the time of the evening offering. And he informed me and talked with me and said, Oh, Daniel, I have, come, I have now come forth to give you skill to understand. We need the Holy Spirit. We need God to, to give us understanding and to give us revelation of His Word. So you see how important it is that you should read the Word of God first of all and be dependent on the Holy Spirit to teach you and to give you understanding of His Word. You can read the whole, actually, you can read the whole Bible very easily. 
someone has actually uh, done that and read the Bible audibly, and which at a pace where uh, everyone can hear it clearly. And for, uh, for that person have done when uh, it was done, the whole Bible has been read. It takes only 71 hours to read the whole Bible. If you multiply 71 hours by 60 minutes an hour, you will get 4,260 minutes. If you divide 4,260 4, minutes by 365 days, then it equals 11.7 minutes a day. In other words, you can, all you need to do is spend 12 minutes a day and read the Bible. You would have read the whole Bible within one year. Is that too much time to spend a day? Nobody say anything. <laughs> is it too much time to spend 12 minutes to read the Bible in one day? No. So what you do now is put your right hand on your heart. Put your right hand on your heart because I'm going to pray that God will help us to read the Bible every day. Read at least 12 minutes. You can read more than 12 minutes, but minimum is 12 minutes. And you will finish reading the Bible in one year. Let's pray. Father, God, we believe you. God, we are serious in knowing and wanting to know your word. Father, we are going to do this because, God, we want to know you. Oh, Father, we thank you for your help, for your grace, for the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And each day when we spend that 12 minutes with you, reading your word, we pray that your Holy Spirit will teach us Give us understanding so that, God, we will know how to live our life, so that, God, we will know what is your plan, what is your will, so that we will know that you are a good God, a great God, a God who cares for us. Oh, God, you have so much in store for us. And so this morning, we have put our hand upon our heart and we pray for the grace of God to help us to do that in Jesus' name. Amen. How does, what about Elijah? Looking at the life of Elijah. How does Elijah has power with God when he prays? In James chapter 5, verse 17 to 18, it says, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. So, don't imagine that Elijah is very strange looking, very ho holy, different look, you know and uh, wearing jacket like us, pastor standing here. No, he's just an ordinary person, a nature like ours. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. Then verse 18, and he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain and the earth produced its fruit. Wow. It looks like here is a man who is able to control weather. Well, if, 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 if Elijah lives today, he'll be a rich man, right? But no, this is not so. Because in 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 1, it tells us, And Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, Ahab is the king at that time, as the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except by my word. Wow, very daring word spoken. What a powerful prayer, pray. Then chapter 18, verse 1, after the three and a half years. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, and saying, Go, prepare, pre, uh, present yourself to Ahab, and I will send rain on the earth. Now we understand. How we say that in, when he prayed, the rain will stop, and there was famine in the land. And after three and a half years, when uh, he, he heard the word of God, he heard God speaking, speaking to him, 
And he prayed, and rain came. Elijah has that right to pray this man, in this manner because in 1 King chapter 8, 1 King chapter 8, verses 37 to 39, this is the prayer of King Solomon at the dedication of the temple. Elijah can pray and believe God for that. Why? Because it says there, King Solomon prayed over the temple of God, which he built for the presence of the ark of God. When there is famine, it goes to verse 37, and when there is famine in the land, pestilence or blights or maldew, locusts or grasshoppers, when their enemies besiege them in the land of their cities, whatever plague, whatever sicknesses there is, Verse 38, whatever prayer, whatever supplication is made by anyone or by all your people Israel, when each one knows the plague of his own heart and spreads out his hand towards this temple, then heal from heaven your dwelling place and forgive and act and give to everyone according to all his ways, whose heart you know, for you alone know the hearts of all the sons of men. That is the basis for Elijah. He knew, and not only he knew, but he actually heard from God. So it is not that Elijah has power within himself to control weather. When we pray with you, it's not us who have the power to answer your prayer, uh, to, to meet your needs at this altar. It is not. It is the power and the authority of the Word of God which has been spoken. God honors his word. God, senior pastor recently reminded us, God's gift and, and, and calling is without repentance. Meaning that when God has spoken and said and given us that talent, that ministry, it is without repentance. He will not withdraw it. Even if you are not living a righteous life that is altogether pleasing to God. God always honors his word. Not that Elijah has great faith. Not that he is a perfect man. It is when you know the word of God and what the Holy Spirit has said to you. And when you pray, your miracle will happen for you. And it's so vital that you hear God's voice and you recognize and know God's voice. We need to be able then to hear God's voice. I guess probably this is the aspect of it which I think we may have some struggle with. Yeah, Pastor, I read the Bible. I know what the Bible says here, what it says there. Uh, but how to hear God's voice? Well, the ability to hear God's voice is not a supernatural gift. So take that out of your mind, all right? And it's not meant for pastors only. Take that out of your mind also. It's not meant for evangelists. So you must go for evangelistic meeting and then they pray for your healing. Because he, he heard God say, somebody has something somewhere in your body and well, God wants to heal you. It's not meant for them alone. God will, but it's not alone. Not meant for your leaders only. Any one of you can learn to hear God's voice. You can't say you can't. I'll give you an illustration. If my wife called me on the phone and said, Timothy, and I answer on the phone, who is that? And then I'm in big trouble. If I ask, who is that? Then she will repeat and say, Mr. Ong. <laughs> uh, undoubtedly, I know who it is already. I, I will recognize that voice, right? Jesus said that the sheep hears the shepherd's voice and the sheep hears the shepherd's voice and, he, and they will respond because they recognize the shepherd's voice. Let's see this video. Three tests. Trying to call the sheep.
right. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. How true it is, isn't it? If even the animal can respond and understand things in this manner, how about you and me? Jesus does not treat us as servants. He does not treat us as servants. Oh, we serve God, we serve God. But He doesn't treat us as servants. Jesus treats us as friends. He wants to share everything that He plans with you, with me. John chapter 15, verse 13 to 15. John 15, 13 to 15. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. And, but I have called you friends. For all things that I heard from my father, I have made known to you. You are Jesus' friends. Whatever he has in his heart and mind, he wants to share with you. Whatever he has heard and understood from the Father, he wants to share with you. What you want to know, what you want to understand in your life, what you need, he wants to share it with you. When there is a unity of God's Word and God's Spirit in prayer, the miraculous will take place. And there will be angelic beings. The angelic beings will be sent by God, from God, as answers to your prayers. Like what happened when Daniel prayed. When Daniel prayed, the angel Gabriel was sent to help Daniel to understand and to assure him that God has heard his prayer. Everything that resists the word of God the purpose of God's, of, of the Lord, they will all be brought down to nothing. Whether it's kings, ministers, or governments, their plans and schemes shall all be shaken and be brought to no effect. The moment you and I pray for God's word and God's will to be done in this nation, our prayer must be directed by the word and the spirit. Then this is the confidence we have before God. When it's directed by the Word of God and by the Spirit. First John chapter 5, verse 14 to 15. Now this is the confidence that we have in Him. That if we ask anything according to His will, He hears. And if we know that He hears, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of Him. Very plain, very simple to understand. You can know the will of God. And when you know the will of God and you pray, then you have this confidence. You have that peace. You have this assurance in your heart that God is going to answer your prayer. Not because it's some fanciful thing that you want and you need or, or, or you're asking for. No, no, not because you are so well behaved and you are so holy. But because of the word of God. And as the Holy Spirit challenges you and inspires you to believe, God does not want to keep us in darkness. I've always remembered that when which senior pastor has always said. God is, doesn't take pleasure in hiding from us. He's not going to hide His will from us to make it difficult for us to pray. For, to make it difficult. God, God doesn't want to make it difficult for us to know His will. There should be no difficulty for you to know the will of God. This morning after us at the altar call, you want to know God's will, you come and pray and believe God. If we ask anything according to His word, if we ask anything according to His will, when the Holy Spirit shows us and enlightens us by His word as we read the word of God, then we hear the voice of the Spirit teaching us. And that is when we pray. When you hear God's voice clearly, then be bold to pray. Don't be shaken, don't, be, don't doubt. Even if it's, uh, it seems as if it's so difficult. Now it's a difficult uh, economy situation. But if you keep on thinking that it's, it's difficult, it's impossible, it's very hard time, then it will always be hard for you. 
But if you would understand the word of God, and if you would just pray and, and, and spend time with the word of, in God's presence, then you find that the, the, that inspiration, that the challenge of the Holy Spirit will come upon you. We need to take one step back in our prayer life. What do I mean by that? We need to take one step back. Don't be too quick to pray when someone asks you to pray. What you should do is wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. You have some great need, wait upon the Lord. Seek the Lord in your inner heart for God's leading, for God's word regarding that need, that request that someone has asked you. When someone asks you to pray for him, you don't just immediately pray according to what he or she asks from you. Instead, probably you should, you should ask that person, what does the Bible has to say about your request? What has the Bible got to say about uh, your, your issue that you are facing? Have you, have you acted according and responded according to God's word you, by, by, by what the word of God has taught you? Are you doing it in a righteous manner to get that business, to, to, to get people to respond to you? Are you doing it in a righteous manner? Have you approached your issue with uh, the other person in a Christ-like manner? Or are you just merely reacting uh, at that moment and now you have a problem issue with that person and now you want to pray for relationship healing? Which is which? Have you been paying your tithes? You pray, you want to pray for God's blessing and provision for you. Have you paid your tithes? For you to be able to pray with the power and authority in the Word, you need to spend that time with God. You need to set aside regular time and have a regular place to pray. A regular time and a regular place where you can be found in God's presence. You need to shut yourself in the closet. And be with him alone. And just talk with God. Like you are talking to a friend. Talk to him like a friend. Don't take your handphone along into the closet and pray. I don't know whether you have seen this before. At dinner table, I look across, we look across to the other table. Table of four or five people, parents with children. Every one of them is holding their phone. And uh, one you will be texting you know, on the phone. Another one will be reading messages. Another one reading, you know, the, uh, you know, the, the video on the, on the, on the messages. Uh, someone, another one probably is talking on the phone. Don't bring your handphone along. If you really are serious in wanting to read the word and pray and spend time in God's presence, please shut down your phone, okay? Yesterday, Pastor Stephen Teach us that prayer is a privilege given by God for us to know Him. So, so be serious with it. Don't be too quick to pray when you are pressed for an answer. Oh, I, I must pray now, I must pray now, I must do something. No, you don't need to. What you should do when you feel like you are pressured to pray for an answer, wait upon God. Wait upon God. Learn to listen to what God has to say. Don't be too quick to pray and then give a word of encouragement to the person when, when you are asked to pray and then send him off. It doesn't help the person at all because that person will, will still have the same issue and same problem and unanswered prayer. It's, it's not good enough to just pray a short prayer. Oh, it's fine. You can go now. Wait upon God. Listen for His direction. Listen for his voice. And then you pray. Then your destiny will change. And you will be, your, your plan and your purpose and your life will be aligned with the plan of God for your life. Instead, we should be quick to answer, yes, Lord. We should be quick to answer, yes, Lord. You need to turn aside from what, uh, aside when you see that burning bush, Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 to 4. Now Moses was standing the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. 
And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush does not burn? So when the Lord, when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the burning bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Here I am. What happens if Moses had continued to go about doing his own work? He saw that burning bush, but he feels so convinced that he must do his job. I need to do my work. I, 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 I do, you know, I, I've got lots of work to do. But no time. What happens if he just continues on his journey? But the Bible tells us that he turned aside, meaning that he actually moved uh, move away from his schedule, from his plan. Whatever he has to do, he, he just, you know, stop and just see and look at that burning bush. You have to be serious with the Word of God. Otherwise, when God tried to get your attention and speak to you, you, you would probably just miss it. You can't hear God's word for you because why? You are too busy. You're too busy with your work. You're too busy with your family matters, so concerned about the house cleaning. You're so busy with your ministry. You're so busy with watching movies, playing with your handphone, watching your things, doing things on your handphone. If you have not learned to wait upon God, you might just keep on walking ahead of God instead of walking beside Him. So be quick to answer, yes, Lord. If you need to, for that, you need to turn aside. Just break loose from whatever that is keeping you away from the presence of God, from knowing God, from hearing from Him. You have to pull yourself away. And come and spend time with God. Many that came, that, come, that have come to our prayer closet, have always said and testified Amen. how that they found the presence of God so rich and so real. And they find answers. They hear God answering their prayer. God will take your word seriously when you take God's word seriously. Amen. So do you take His word and treat God's word with, as, with great worth. Treat it with great value. If you do, you will then keep aside time, your prime time, to study the word and spend quality time with God. What are you going to pray? How are you going to pray when, when, you, when you don't have God's word in your heart? You have not heard from God. You need to have His word. You need to hear Him speaking to you. And you need to have a listening heart to hear Him speak to you. What are you going to pray when you don't have God's Word in your heart? If you have not heard from Him, you need to have His Word so that He can speak to you. And you, can, and you must have a listening heart. You have to really pull yourself aside day by day at a specific time, at a specific place. For some of us, it may be the prayer closet. What That brother will come to the prayer tower and he will always take the closet number one. He, he enjoys that closet number, number one. That's where he always and have experienced God's presence. You, it can be in your house. If you have your privilege to you have your own room, quiet room, but even then, in your house, you, you have your, that privacy. Sometimes your mind is still thinking of a lot of things for the house, for the family. You may even have an office place. It is fine. For some, maybe when you step into the car in the morning before you, and, and you're driving off, and you're alone in the car, perhaps, I don't know. But you need to have a place 
so that you will recognize I'm going there to pray to spend time with God I'm not going there to do anything else when you come to church it's to worship God you want to watch a movie not in the church go to the cinema you want to play football go to the football field you don't play it in the cinema so the place is very important you need to set aside a place you need to have a time that you set aside for God God will take your word seriously as you take God's word seriously and once you hear you heard his word for you then you can run with that vision and you will fulfill God's plan and purposes for your for your life and when you pray Unless, as you walk along, go along that journey of faith, you will see miracle after miracle taking place. That's what happened for Moses. After he has that burning bush experience, after he has heard what God has said to him, what God wanted him to do, miracle after miracles take place, took place. If you have not heard from God, then you are just running around in every direction. And when you run in so many directions, you are just getting busy, that's all. And eventually, you get tired, weary. You may even get confused. And one day, you may even say to you, why am I doing all these things? Huh? Where, where, when will it end? Where am I going? And, I, and you don't seem to arrive. You need to take one step back and just take God's word understand God's word and then to listen to, to just spend time in his presence and let him speak to us and this morning I want to encourage you to do just that for some it may be your first time ever trying to do that but it's alright you just come with an open heart a sincere heart before God just come you have heard whatever has been preached. I'm very sure you have read the Bible some other time before. And just allow the Holy Spirit to remind you of the Word of God. And as you stand in that, at that altar place, forget about who is beside you, who is behind you. Forget about the altar worker that is moving around, trying to pray with you. In fact, the altar worker don't need to go around and pray for anyone. You yourself come down and pray. And just begin to enjoy God's presence. God is here. That's what Jesus says, isn't it? In Matthew there. Where two or three, that's all you need, are gathered in my name. There I am in their midst. And so when you come and stand at this place, then when you hear God's voice, God's word, begin to reach out just say a, a simple prayer before God for whatever you have need of. I have not prayed for every other need. We only pray for two very specific needs just now. But I'm sure there are other kinds of needs in our midst. So, it is your moment, your moment to come and experience your own miracle for your life. Especially those that are sitting right on top. Because sometimes I walk, I, I also sit up there and walk around down there, up there. I see the people reading their hand food. Please pay attention. Please pay attention to the Word of God. I, I trust that you are reading the Word of God when you read your hand food. Because that's the only way for you to grow in the Lord, to know God. And that's the only way for you to know that God is saying something to you. So let's all stand. Oh, we praise you, O God. Oh, we bless you, we praise you, we believe in you, O God. Hallelujah. Glory, Father, everyone, everyone. God that is trusting in your name, O God. God, you will touch them and affirm it once again. Hallelujah, Father. Hallelujah, Father. Oh, God, even right now. Holy Spirit. Oh, speak, I pray.
there's something that is still hindering you in your own heart, deep within you. There's some attitude issue. There's some attitude issue that is hindering you. You have to change. You have to repent. You have to ask God to forgive you. And just turn away from those wrong attitudes towards the person because that's what that is hindering you if you would just release it let go of it and pray for the blood of Jesus to cover and to cleanse then you will find not only the presence of God that is present here so rich in our midst and you will hear his prompting in your heart and in your heart in your mind in your own spirit, deep within your spirit, you know that God is saying that to you. So pray now. Oh, Jesus, I pray for your cleansing power, the cleansing of the blood of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Not, was it, not just only that attitude is you, Lord God. Father, we release and forgive. Ask for your forgiveness. Father, there is some other issues, oh God. I don't know. I'm not aware. But Father, the individuals that are here, they know and they're aware. And in Jesus' name, even now as we confess it to you, God, you cleanse us by your blood. Father, release your spirit even now into... Oh, let the power of the Spirit of God come upon us. Let, and let the Holy Spirit whisper into our ear. settling over our shoulder become heavy in Jesus name God loosen it yes. lose it oh God yes. oh that which has been is heavy and binding upon our heart lose it in Jesus name Saramaka Shandai oh Father that which is in the house in the home in the family lose it oh God that issue the problem is that is holding back relationship building. Father, I just thank you for what you're doing now. Father, in that office, I can see it in your office. There are two individuals in your office. There seems to be always a hindrance to you. But don't see them that way. Attitude is very important. And beyond that, now you need to pray for God to bless those two individuals. So I want you to pray a very short prayer now. And then we're going to sing this chorus. Oh, yes, God. Yes, God, you're doing your miracle in our midst now. Things will change and turn around for you. It's going to change and turn around for you To your favor It's to your favor When you go back To that business deal To that office To the request that you have made and presented Things will change and turn around for you and So you just believe it Just trust in this great God Who is an awesome God 
He will bless you and you're going to see a miracle now.